Look around the room and see who's with you this morning. Thousand people sitting here celebrating their life divine and thousands online. And just bless them with your eyes. Where everybody you see, uh, give your eyes uh, the blessing that anyone you see is blessed because you see them. Now come a little closer and look at the being sitting right next to you and say, out of seven billion people, I'm sitting next to you. This is not an accident. This is an on purpose from God. I get to tell you something. You're magnificent. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. You're full of spiritual power. Full to overflowing with divine confidence. Beauty and intelligence. Harmonizing prosperity and wealth. Health and well-being. Well well -being. All of those qualities are in you. All of those are in and you have come here to set them free. To live a soulfully liberated life. To live a soulfully liberated and be a beneficial presence on this planet. Beneficial I'm so glad we got to talk to each other this morning. <laughs> Let's be this. And so it is. So it is. Amen. Amen. Give up some love and appreciation. <laughs> Feel the high vibration that's allowing you to transcend your personal mind. Transcend any opinions you have about life or about yourself or about anyone else. And to come into a rarefied spiritual atmosphere of recognizing the great power and presence and love that is everywhere by whatever name we choose to call this presence. Let, your, let this vibration of your omni-activity that you've just uh, touched and agreed upon with each other take you to that place within yourself where you already know that all is well. Even though your eyes may be telling you something else about life experience. Maybe your ears may be sharing you something about the lowest common denominator of the human experience going on on the planet. Your heart is in control now. Your soul is, has dominion now. And it's allowing you to feel that all is well within your being right now, regardless of the temporary human experience at the surface of life. You're coming into the very depth of your being. As the theme would indicate this month, uh, um, moving from the serious to the sacred and living a reverential life. For those of us and those of you who have had an existential encounter with the divine presence, um, a tryst with God in your prayer life, your meditation life, your life visioning, moments of sacred service where the, the veil dissolves and you realize all the time you thought you were serving someone else, you were actually serving yourself as them. Whenever we had those kind of moments of moving into the zone, moving into the flow motion aspect of life, we have an encounter and we begin to see that throughout the entire cosmos, throughout the entire universe, all with, throughout all of nature, there's nothing serious going on. There is an order or harmony. There's a peace. And all that seems to be chaotic. When stepped back far enough from it, we see some underlying laws in operation and a condition being created for the emergence of something that is beyond what we can comprehend in that particular moment. We begin to understand that in truth, the universe is friendly, that the universe is on your side, that the universe being the outpicturing of the mind of the infinite is always operating for your freedom, that it may come into its own as your life. And so we don't take things seriously. You can be focused without being serious, and you can be focused on the reverential. We're here to be focused on the sacred. We look at nature, we look at the stars, we look at the universe through massive telescopes. 
we look at the universe through NASA's microscopes and we see the DNA in our body temple reflecting in the fundamental order of the universe. We see the star systems reflecting the fundamental order of the universe. There's an order that back of everything and never does it compromise its own nature. Life is always expressing itself dynamically. Energy is never created or destroyed. It's always circulating and recycling and circulating and recycling. So there's never any loss in the universe at all or in the cosmos or in your God consciousness. And so rather than uh, 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 becoming tense and serious, we enter into a dynamic feeling tone of celebration and love and prayer and generosity and creativity so that we get to reflect this order and we move into the sacred where we're able to see the face of God everywhere through the anointing, through the encounter, through the prayer, through the meditation. Our eyes become anointed, our ears become anointed, our heart becomes anointed, and we see differently. We do not discard that which is happening on the base experiential level. We do not uh, put our heads in the soil and pretend it's not going on. But we're also aware vibrationally that if we enter into one a seriousness and a fear about it, we will expand it. And if we become pious and separate ourselves uh, uh, from it and think we're better than other people, we will expand it. And so we enter fully into life, seeking to live a reverential life. That is respecting life, respecting mother nature, respecting each other. Look at each other for just a brief second and realize that the presence of God is in that being right there. That being reflects the presence of God. And instead of seeing personalities all the time, you will have moments where you reflect upon the thought that God is right there where that individual is. And if you could see it for a moment, you could not help but to go down on bended knee and sometimes just bow to each other at the power and the beauty and the love and the potential that is within all of these beings, including Naja, who we, who we uh, christened today. We stand in that kind of awareness. This is to walk the reverential life. So that is, as you leave your home, you're on a hunt to see the face of God everywhere uh, that you go, to hear the voice of God everywhere uh, that you go, to feel it in your heart, your mind, and your soul, and so that your prayer and your meditation is extended uh, from uh, your altar, extended from the place where you pray, extended from the place where you do your yoga or tai chi or qigong, extended from the place where you do your formal reverential activities, is extended into your life. It extends over your tongue. It extends through your thoughts. It extends through your actions so that God gets to be present on earth. In other words, people are praying for God to come down and help out. And God said, I sent you to reflect me, to reveal me, to dance me, to sing of me, to, to, to release the holy hugs, to, to, to circulate uh, your gifts and talents uh, I'm already there where you are. Set me free through you. And so we don't pray for God to come anywhere because God is everywhere. We pray that our minds may be free enough, our hearts may be free enough, our tongues may be free enough to sing the praises of the Spirit that is everywhere in its fullness. That's a liberating prayer. That's a freedom prayer. And that's not a binding prayer of, of limiting God to some superman status. That is expanding our awareness of the presence of God, realizing that God is everywhere as love, beauty, intelligence, life, pure consciousness, knowing of itself to a full degree within us and as us. And then we begin to catch our life, individually and globally, what it could look like when inspiration replaces ambition. Yeah. 
What do I mean by that? I call upon the understanding of the Sphinx to bring an understanding of our evolutionary endeavor while here on the planet. When you look at the Sphinx, you see the base of the Sphinx being an animal. It's animalistic. This is a part of our evolution. There's a, a reptilian brain within us. There's a, an animal part within us. There's some of it is, is sensual and some of it is animalistic. And, 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 and the high side of that is that there's an instinct within us, an instinct for preservation and protection and, 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 and safety and survival. The, down, the dark side and the downside of the animalistic side is that we see things in separation. We see things, we see enemies everywhere. And, and so when we're way in our animalistic aspect of life, of enemies abound and there is separation. The high end, there's an instinct to survive, instinct to, 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 to have enough food to eat and to, to make it through the day. As we continue to evolve, we go up that ladder and at the Sphinx, you see the face of a human being. And this begins the advent of uh, the frontal cortex and uh, the reflective consciousness. We can actually think about what we're thinking about. You can actually look at your own thoughts. You can actually uh, choose what thoughts you want to hold and what thoughts you want to release. You can actually bracket your opinions. Put them to the side and have a day of freedom without your own opinions. <laughs> Going back to the Garden of Eden, so to speak. I'm free of all that weightiness of all of my opinions. In the human realm, you have intuition. Intuition uh, 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 embraces and transcends instinct. In intuition is consciousness shot into time. So you can actually see and feel things uh, that have been set in motion, but they haven't manifested yet. But you can intuit them. And this is a little bit a cut above the animal instinctual level, which is mainly used for survival. Your intuition can begin to catch all manner of radiant beauty and, and insights. At the human level, the high side of the human is reflective consciousness, intuition, to be able to think independent of circumstances and, and absolutely make choices independent of the circumstances that you're in so you can choose the higher and higher road. And, and the, the dark side of the human level is still a little bit of separation in people and a, a, a sense that the mind can be used for cleverness and, and, and can, uh, people can perfect their personality uh, uh, to say one thing while they're thinking another. It's called sometimes politicians where... <laughs> They can develop a, a, such an interesting personality that has nothing to do with their agenda behind them. At the human level, the, the high side is intuition and reflective consciousness. The dark side is uh, the mind being used for cleverness and, and ploys to, to, to uh, 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 there's jealousy and envy and ploys to, to get things that don't belong to them by right of consciousness. On an individual scale, there's selfishness on a global scale. There's going over people's borders and stealing resources and war in the name of patriotism. There's all manner of things in that human level. And then there's, uh, in the Sphinx, uh, you see the eyes that are looking into the eternal. This is our divine nature. There's an evolution from the animal to the human to the, to the divine, where we begin to realize, oh my God, oh I'm God. My life is the life of God. Not demeaning or blaspheming the presence of God, but our life is an emanation of the God. The sunbeam does not blaspheme the sun. The waves of the ocean does not blaspheme the ocean as they reflect and reveal the same power and the same elements of the ocean. They are their distinct individual selves. We do not blaspheme the presence of God by becoming more and more and more and more and more ourself. That's God becoming more and more and more of itself through us. So that divine realm, we go from, in, we go from intuition to direct knowing. We embrace intuition, include intuition, and transcend intuition to knowing the truth. And that is the truth, capital T, of the spiritual qualities that are everywhere. The beauty, and the love, the harmony, the intelligence. At this level, you, you, you know something that is real. 
at the human level, you can intuit something so-called negative that's about to happen. But at the divine level, you just know the absolute truth. This is what is meant when a practitioner would say, I will know the truth about you. They're not saying I'm going to have a good opinion about you. They're not saying I'm just going to say happy talk about you. They're saying I'm going to transcend my own limited perception. I'm going to go into prayer and I'm going to know that that which spawned you is your life and being. Transcending time and space, there's a wellness, a wholeness, a well-being, a dynamic good that is erupting and emerging in your life. And so those three domains allow me to, to, to give you the context. At, at the human level, there is ambition. One is ambitious. That means uh, that the word ambitious comes, has the root of ambi, like ambidextrous, which means moving in two directions at the same time. An individual that is ambitious is going headlong for their goal, but at the same time is afraid they're not going to get there. And so there's a, a constant pull between uh, trying to get where you're going and a fear you're not going to get there. Individuals that are ambitious only sometimes achieve goals, but their life is empty. Sometimes get what they think they want, but there's an emptiness in the getting because uh, the, 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 the vision is not being pulled, you see. They're not pulled by a transcendent vision of evolution of consciousness and becoming more of their self and being a beneficial presence on the planet. They just, from the animalistic and the human level, they just want what they want, you see. And so when inspiration replaces ambition, when inspiration, that is inspiration is the word of God. The inspiration is the voice of God. The inspiration is the thought of God. When inspiration replaces ambitious, ambition, you're pulled by a vision. And the vision includes everyone. And the vision is not touched nor tarnished by time. And the vision pulls you into being a higher and greater version of yourself. You're no longer fueled by being ambitious. You're being pulled by the inspiration of God. Ambition depletes. Fear brings up toxic chemicals. Inspiration heals. Your pull is a vivifying energy in you. Oh, I'm inspired by that. I saw the sun eclipse, or sometimes called the sunset, and I'm inspired by it. I've seen the stars. I'm inspired. I heard that poetry. I'm inspired. I heard that song. I'm inspired. I saw that dance. I'm inspired. Oh, my God. I saw that, that, that medical technology. I'm inspired. Something feeds you in your soul. Inspiration fuels and feeds and funds and regenerates and, and resurrects ambition pulls you down and so when you look at when inspiration replaces ambition on the individual level you're pulled by a transcendent vision of what's possible in your own life it fuels and, 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 and funds you takes over your life when it is a when inspiration replaces ambition on a global level, there's kindness and sharing and, 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 and a generation, genera a, a generating of good. You no longer see enemies everywhere. You, you no longer are living in that particular paradigm. Understand, as I was saying in the earlier service, that we're in the middle of a paradigm shift. We're in, the sh we're in the paradigm shift uh, from the animalistic, low-level human consciousness that built up nations uh, to, uh, to live in a pseudo-patriotic, uh, uh, I'm right, uh, everybody else is wrong kind of consciousness. Enemies everywhere. And I will plunder your nation to steal your resources because my animalistic, low-level human says that I got to get what I got to get regardless of so-called collateral damage, which isn't collateral. They're real people, you see. And so we're in the middle of a, of a shift a paradigm in which at this time, as you've heard me say over the years, at this time in human history, 
every issue can be solved right now. There's more than enough of everything, more than enough energy, more than enough technology to clean up all pollution, more than enough of everything. So the paradigm of plundering and the paradigm of stealing and the paradigm of separation can begin to dissolve, but it doesn't go without a fight. Because when an individual is in the reptilian, uh, animalistic consciousness, they only know win and lose. They don't know win-win. It's not in the consciousness until you have a vision of your oneness with the presence and kindness and compassion and generosity begin to take over. When we begin to see that we're in a paradigm shift and that what's really occurring is that there is a tug of war, so to speak, between a, a moment in which everybody can have everything that they need in terms of their basic needs, yeah. right here on the planet, which begins to dissolve immediately the, uh, any kind of envy, jealousy, sense of separation, hate towards any other nation because everybody has their needs met. Terrorism dissolves at that particular moment because everyone has what they need as a basic. And then the fomenting of hate and separation that comes from the reptilian animalistic mind that foments racism and bigotry and hate and revenge and all of that, it begins to dissipate as more and more and more and more individuals uh, begin to have a level of coherence around the possible. You're talking about right now in a split second, a total shift of consciousness. This is where we are living. When inspiration replaces and you're talking about the likes of a George Washington Carver when asked uh, how did he able to pull out all of those uh, inventions and those wonderful ways of healing through Mother Nature. And he said in substance when you fall in love with something deep enough it will reveal all its secrets to you. You're talking about being inspired at a high level. You're talking about a Nelson Mandela. You're talking about His Holiness the Dalai Lama. You're talking about inspired musicians and inventors and innovators who have developed such a coherence around creativity that they have an artistic perceptivity. And that is they are able to perceive dynamic solutions in the midst of the chaos that ultimately gives rise uh, uh, to the top tier mystical awareness, a mystic perceptivity of seeing the answers and the order and the harmony that is everywhere. When inspiration replaces ambition, which only comes uh, through a, 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 an encounter with the divine, which only comes through your prayer, your tryst with the divine, your meditation, you have to get down. You have to get involved with your own spiritual practice so that these aren't mere words you are hearing today. They become in you the fulfilling word of God that says in substance, you have been called. All have been called. Now you must answer this call to glorify the presence in a way that has never happened before. You're in a paradigm shift. The old paradigm will, will, will be every time there's an election, they will let you know of all the violence that's going on in the world because they've got to keep you in fear. They've got, to keep, they've got to keep you asking the wrong questions. What candidate is going to make us more safe? Stupid question. <laughs> Neither one. You can't be safe until the world is living at a different level, until everyone has their needs met. That is stupidity. But if you buy into it, you walk lockstep and say, oh, what candidate's going to make me safe? You're not even asking the right question. The right question is, how can that which is within us emerge? How can we create the condition for the possible human to emerge? Those are the questions. How can all needs be met for everyone? Those are the questions. How can we spread the wealth around the world? Those are the questions. Not how can we build borders. Not how can we protect ourselves. Not how can we have more security. I don't care how many fences, how many bombs, how much nuclear. You are not going to be safe unless it's in consciousness. Do not bite the bait of nonsense. Do not bite the bait. In the old paradigm, 
There is no safety at all except for those who are living in the secret place of the Most High and that are unafraid of anything. That's where safety lies. In the new paradigm, there's no enemies. You see, all needs are met. Do not listen to the old paradigm corporate media. They will have you asking the wrong questions. Your perception will become so narrow that you'll start to believe your opinions that aren't even yours. Oh, I'm trying to tell you something this morning. I want you to feel it. As you heard me say, for those who were here last week and I sent that video, one of the things I reminded us all was that uh, only love can trump hate yes. and evil, you see. And so today, when there's revenge going on for police officers uh, uh, killing uh, uh, black men, uh, that is as evil as the, the act that killed the black man in the first place. We are not fomenting any kind of revenge from the animalistic reptilian brain. We are asking a higher question, how can we evolve? How can we move all of these structures into a higher frequency and a higher level? You see, this is where people of faith walk. This is where they live from. You have to clear the landmines in your own consciousness. Those places of fear, those places of revenge, everybody gets frustrated over something. And but you're not going to allow your frustration to move into action. You're going to let inspiration of a high order of the kind of world you want to live in to replace your ambition to give you what you think you want in any given moment, you see. This is where we are walking as a people that know God. People that know God is love. People that know God is peace and joy and harmony and wholeness. If Nelson Mandela had stayed the course of violence, he would not have ever been the president that moved his nation to a higher order of being. It would not have ever happened. We think of a world where inspiration is replacing ambition. Think of that world. That world has to begin in individuals. It starts with individuals. And understand that one with God is a majority. One with God consciousness wreaks so much power that ultimately as one and two and three and eight and ten individuals come together, as a community comes together vibrating at that level of coherence around the divine idea, and in other communities around the world are vibrating at that level, it doesn't matter the prevailing lies that are told from corporate media and the structures of the $200 trillion industry of oil and health care and agriculture that keeps you in an old paradigm of using you up until you die. doesn't matter how strong that appears to be. The moment there's a collective awareness that we're all one and that all needs can be met. This is why the internet was trying to be suppressed for a while because once you begin to talk to somebody around the world and you see they're not your enemies, and this is why they want to keep you from traveling because once you go to other places and realize, oh, these are just people just like me. You cannot be controlled unless you are in fear. Fear not, little flock. It is God's good pleasure to give you the entire kingdom. But you've got to be gracious enough to receive it. Oh, take the breath right here. And feel into even what can't even be said. It's under the tongue. It's, it's a mystical perceptivity of, of expanding our awareness, of including and transcending. So you don't get rid of. You include and transcend. In other words, it's, you keep your animal... But it doesn't run you. You keep your human, but it doesn't run the entire show. Trend, you include and transcend it so that you're walking as a divine being. Inspired. Inspiration flows through your mouth. Your thoughts, your mouth, your actions are inspired by the kind of being you want to be and the kind of world you want to live in. You see? And you're not fooled by the old paradigm trying to keep the paradigm the same. 
The old paradigm is built on lack, limitation, not enough, the spirit, not worry, scarcity, and separation from each other. That's where, that's, that's where it's built from. We know from the universal space uh, that there's no lack of anything, there's no scarcity of anything, there's no scarcity of energy, there's no scarcity of resources, there's no scarcity of anything. Everything is here, you see. It's a different paradigm, and we're not separate, we're one. Oh my God, don't get into, don't, 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 don't let any politician foment hate within you or fear of anybody. One may want to foment a, a civil hate. One may want to foment global hate. Don't let them take you anywhere outside of your connection with the presence and your connection with all of humanity. No one left out. No one. No one. On the human level, I'm going to close here. On the human level, your intuition will keep you safe. Something about to go down, you'll feel it and get out of there. You see? And in your direct knowing will kick in. God is there. <sighs> Boundaries and bombs won't save you. One warrior will develop barriers and protect them. Spiritual warrior expands our inner barrier until there's no separation. You duly deputize now to be a spiritual warrior. Expand your barriers within your borders, within yourself. Become aware that you're one with the presence of God. As we now turn within in this moment and we become a blessing field. This community is a blessing field. It is a field of blessing. We embrace our entire nation now. More gunshots rang out today in Louisiana where individual shot police officers out of revenge. We bless the whole state of affairs there. We bless all our nation where it has become popular again to hate and to feel separate from other people, Mexicans and gay people and poor people and, oh, my God. But the truth never goes out of popularity. We're one. We're one. We're one. We embrace all peoples today. And we allow our, for our dynamic awareness to be so lifted up in the rarefied atmosphere of absolute truth that on the individual level we transcend we include and transcend our animal our human and walk as divine beings on the global level we embrace and include the animal instinct we embrace and include our humanness we embrace and include and transcend it and step into the divine as a global citizen. Global citizen nations that are taking care of each other rather than warring against each other. And we begin to see a vision of all of our national armed forces being bulwarks of compassion and generosity all over the world. Bringing gifts of whatever a nation needs Oh, I can see it. See it with me. See it with me. See it with me. Infinite spirit, divine presence, how great thou art. How infinite, divine, and perfect is thy holy, holy name, thy divine nature in us and as us. We give great thanks to the great God of the universe pouring forth through us right now. As we come, a mouth please for a blessing for each and every individual right here in the sanctuary. That their life may be made whole where it appears to be broken. That their life may be resurrected where it appears to be dead. That there's a total regeneration that is occurring on the individual level. Wholeness and well-being reign supreme.